Well, actually, my name is Mary McMullen. I was born in Richmond in 1920 and uh, came to work in the shipyards when they started hiring and training women to do welding. And why did you do that? For the money or independence or...? Probably a number of things. My, my husband was away. The, the war was going on, you know, and, and we all became aware of Pearl Harbor and what was happening there. And where was your husband? He was in the Aleutian Islands. Navy? No, no, no. We had three children, and, and he was a. He worked for a contractor, doing uh, military base kinds of work. He was an electrician. Well, incredible. So you were at home. I was at Richmond, home. So you decide you're going to go down and get a job. Then what happened? <laughs> well, actually, I worked all three shifts in the the uh, shipyards. Uh, I had to try each of them out. I had three children at home and, you know, having uh, little little kids <laughs> and having someone in to take care of them and it was quite a challenge to get oh, yeah. child care and keep up a full 40-hour-a-week uh, job Well, that's a welding. good question. How in the world did you do it? Tell me about that part of your life. <laughs> I guess I did it because I was in my 20s and had unending energy. <laughs> wow. Not like today. <laughs> Okay. And I don't know, I've, I've always kind of felt like if there was a problem, what you do is you get to work on it, and there is a solution out there if you work on it. And, that's just and this is did. what we were doing. Okay, yes. and then where did you work and what did you do and the whole story, please? Well, shipyard number three, and they trained me to weld. And I thought, oh, this is kind of fun. It's sort of like sewing a seam, only you're doing it with hot metal. <laughs> And you're, you're welding two pieces of steel together. And, you know, I worked down in the holds of those, both the Victory ships and the Liberty ships first, and then the Victory ships. And, uh, you know, I mean, what was it like? You, you wore heavy leather uh, clothing and a bandana on your head and a big black hood. And... Uh, Sometimes you burned yourself, <laughs> but you carried that heavy 240, let's see, what is that, 240 volts um, cable, you know, that was that big around, and carried it over your shoulder with your stinger and your rods and all that stuff down yes. into the hold. I guess we're moving you ladies back to the shade. Can we pick it up there? That'll be fine. Okay. Thank you. Do you want me to hold your phone? Well, I, 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 <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that we, we, we started an, a new era during World War II. Um, I, I was married to a man who was very supportive of women and, you know, women's independence and being able to go about doing what needed to be done. And he was, he was off helping the war effort, and so, you know, I, I could do that too. And also, you know, that, that was in the depth of the Depression. Actually, we began to come out of the Depression after we started building ships to send to Britain. And that, that gave, gave not only women an opportunity, but families an opportunity to get back to work and get back to living your life. So, yes, I did go to San Francisco some, not a whole lot. I was a very busy lady. You work 40 hours a week and, and take care of three children and try to keep in touch with your husband. <laughs> <laughs> do do all all of these things. I don't I don't really know. Seventy years ago, pretty much today, yesterday, when the war ended, uh, how did you feel during that day? A, t a tremendous sense of relief that that now maybe we could get on with our lives and, and also get away from the fear. I remember having to keep the the shades drawn, the blackouts. And, and then uh, what did you do after the war? You must have 
yeah, sounds like you started must have had out on a whole new career. <laughs> yes, tell us about that, please. Really, we'd like to hear. Well, uh, actually, when my husband came home from Alaska and the Aleutian Islands, uh, he came home determined to uh, start something new. He didn't want to be an electrician the rest of his life, which is what he was doing uh, when he was working for the contract workers. And so we started a real estate business and moved out into the country with our children. And How was he? I heard real estate, of course, they always say location, location, location. Oh, no, no, real locations? estate, no, re real estate was not then like it is now at all. Did you do well? It, did, did we do well? Did you do well? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, we were in on the kind of the ground floor of the development of uh, the housing for people who were, the men were coming home from war and starting their families. And uh, the demand, of course, there had been such restriction of materials and everything that you needed during all of those years. Everybody's the things the began base, to open up yeah, yeah, wow. so that that so now you could actually get wiring and lumber and, and paint and butter and gasoline and <laughs> all of the things that we'd been doing without for all of those years. So we started in uh, helping get houses built out in the El Sobrante area, if anybody knows where that is. Yeah, yeah that, that was really country when we moved out there, and now it's just full of homes everywhere. But we, we began that in about 1945. So, and that, that developed. And, and of course, I, I lived in Richmond and El Cerrito for my whole life until uh, about two and a half to three years ago. I moved to Orangevale to be near my daughter because I'm 95 years old now. I'm 95 now. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody tells me I don't look that old. Well, you know, you just... There were big problems to solve in those days. And I've always been a problem solver. You know, if there's something needs doing, why, well, okay, let's figure out how to get it done. And, and get in and do it. So, so you did it, it's kind of a strange yeah, question, but you didn't continue we'll welding just for a hobby or anything. No, no, but I've, I've always, I don't know, you know, I, I told your husband, I guess, that um, learning to weld was kind of like sewing a seam. And um, I've been a sewer all my life. So I certainly did a lot of sewing in the years after retiring from the welding business. And uh, I guess I like being creative. Building those ships was very impressive. So you were at number three shipyard? Yes. And they, I guess it was, they built specific ships for specific yards? Like they built cargo ships at one of the yards and... That's what oh, I, th really I think we built, um, built everything? we built uh, uh, Liberty ships and Victory ships oh, okay. here. Yeah, I think ours were, yeah, I suppose they were cargo ships and, and I think uh, some troop carriers too. Uh, see, when, when they were launched from the ways here, they were um, not fully outfitted. They were just built strong enough to be launched out into the water and then they were fitted then for whatever duty it was that they were destined to do. So did they make a big deal out of launching each ship? Did you go to the ceremony? Oh yes, oh yes, flags flying and champagne across the bow and oh yes it was a big deal. It was exciting. No, I didn't go to all of them. Well, you know, they were, we built ships, so many of them, and so fast that you just had to be there at the right time. Because, you know, we did things like uh, set the record on how fast you could get a ship together and get it off the ways. What was your record? Oh, I don't remember now. <laughs> You know, like those weeks or months? Oh no, so many days. So many days. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, this, this was a shipbuilding method that was developed by Kaiser. And he had it figured out how you could put parts of the ship together on the, the way and then had huge cranes that picked those pieces up and put them onto the, the ship frame itself. Like modules. Yes, yes. Did you, how many ships did you personally work on? How many different ones? That would be hard to say because, you know, you'd be working not necessarily on the same ship every time. You'd get your assignment when you went to work. Okay. Just one minute left. Maybe we can kind of wrap it up. But thank you so much. Just one minute left of my video. Yeah, so say, uh, he wants you to say, uh, you know, like any life lessons or any life lessons or anything just to wrap it up. You only got one minute. Life lessons. Never give up, you know. If, if there's something out there that needs doing, just get to work and go do it. Don't whine. Yeah. yeah. You know, as soon as you guys show, hey, we can do an industrial job on the assembly line, just like building cars at Ford or whatever, you proved it. And it's case closed, right? Yes, some, sometimes uh, that was not too well accepted by the men. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it, was, it was kind of, we were challenging their manhood or something. 